Hello and welcome to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to cover how to edit families in Revit. These in particular are going to be tips and tricks on how to edit an existing family that you may have downloaded off the internet. Sometimes you'll find something on the internet and you think, wow, this is awesome. And then you open it up and you find out it's a bit quirky. So let's look and see how we can take the quirks out of our family and uh, make it work for us. So I'm going to jump on over to Revit here. I'm going to open up this little trench drain. Now, you can do it in any version of Revit. Uh, the tips we're going to use, this is not specific to any version or, or flavor like structure or MEP. So this is a little bit older version, trench drain, and some manufacturers actually produce them and save them as an older version because that way everybody using 12, 13, 14, and 15 can use them. If they were to create them in 15, then no one in the previous versions could use it. So you may get this little upgrade process, and that's just part of... Uh, you know, downloading families from the internet. So now we ended a family, and this is a trench drain, and it looks like it's a hosted object, but let's do a little bit of exploring to find out about the model uh, or the family itself. If we go up here to Foursquare and you select on it, this will actually tell you what parameters are available in the, the family. So you'll notice I have a length parameter, and we'll come back to that in a moment. Some other things we can check is how is this object hosted? Is it is it face based? Is it ceiling based? Is it floor based? Etc. And to do that, we'll go up top and you'll see this little folder category. Now, when you hit the folder, you drop it down and we scroll through here. You see it's a generic model, and as we come down, you'll see that it is uh, face based. So that means it'll stick to things. Now, you can't change a face based object to, let's say, a non hosted object or vice versa. So if you create one from scratch, make sure you use the right one off the bat. Now you can change this to different things here if need be. So that's the uh, family and category parameters box. We'll close that out. Now it's time to check the family. Now this, the reason you're probably in here and trying to edit the family is because it probably doesn't work. Uh, something about it worked great for whoever made it, but they posted it on the internet. You downloaded it and thought it was the best thing since sliced bread until you actually tried to use it. So it says the length right here. Now I'll go up top and I'll fire this up and I'm thinking, all right, let's type and change the length to maybe 12 feet. So I come in here and type in 12 and I hit apply. You'll notice that this time it comes up and says restraints not satisfied. Like, oh geez. So I hit remove constraints. And you'll see how the thing kind of just goes berserk. So I'm going to hit cancel a lot of that. Actually just go ahead and hit OK. And you'll see how the the two bones or reference planes jump with the dimension. But the other objects went all squirrely on us. So you're probably wondering why did that happen? So the best thing to look for is look for other dimensions that are restraining it. Now, the first place you want to look on the floor plan, and then you want to go to front. Okay, and then we'll go to right. And you'll notice there's not a lot of stuff in there. We'll even check the others back and left. If we had a 3D or section view, we'd check it also. But you notice how it all went squirrely on us. So how can we make this thing work correct? Well, we're going back to the reference plane. And a lot of times what people do is they nest or in embed the dimensions and you don't see them. So my re recommendation is always keep the dimensions out where the users can see them. So if you or me or someone else wants to edit the, the family, those dimensions are easily accessible. Now, if I select on this, let's say, this solid here, you'll notice that I roll up there's two different pieces. We select on it, and this happens to be, uh, you know, some type of extrusion or whatever. If you're not sure what it is, hover for a moment. Leave your cursor there. See, it says extrusion. Now I'm going to hit tab, and you'll see that it got another extrusion and as you tab through you've got a bunch of these little pieces parts so I'm gonna hover over one piece here that's a void extrusion and that void extrusion seems to be working right it's this regular extrusion that's gone a bit crazy so I'll select it and I hit edit extrusion now when I do this what's gonna happen is it opens up and notice what's internal inside that extrusion someone put dimensions in here what Revit did was, when we changed the parameters over here, it said, whoa, dude, I got dimensions all over the place. It totally freaked. So what I'd recommend is don't nest the dimensions, unless you, you know that you're doing it and everyone else knows. By taking these out, now Revit is not going to be fighting itself to make it right. The next thing we'll do is I'm going to take the, these, the solid here, and I'm going to make it align with those bones or the reference planes. Now to do that, I can do it actually here, or I can actually hit finish. Now when I hit finish, you'll notice that the solid is still here, but it's not associated with those elements. Now the nice thing is we can actually use the align command, 
and I can say align with that bone or that reference plane, this edge, and it will jump into place and I'll lock it. So now the edge of that solid is going to move. Now if I come down here, I can do it also. Now you can do it either internally in the solid, if I hover over and hit tab, I pick it, or you can do it here. Now if I hit edit extrusion, you'll notice we have the, the purple line. You can do it here also. I'll, I'll do it both places. So you can see align this object and this object and I lock them. So the rule of families is create your reference planes. Once the reference planes are created, then add dimensions, convert the dimensions to parameters as needed, then create the solid and lock the solid to the actual reference planes. Do not lock it to the dimensions or other solids and you'll be good to go. So as long as you stick to those rules, notice now it's good to go. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out. We're going to go to Foursquare again and uh, it's actually family types the real name of it hit eight foot hit apply on that you'll notice that you saw the bones or reference planes jump and notice how the rest of the pieces followed now what if we wanted to change or make the width add a parameter there you'll notice currently there are no parameters so it's just set now I'm gonna cut a section through here so we can see it hit the little section button cut on through like so now if we take a look at this element this trench train, you'll see it has a certain size and dimensions to it. As I roll over it, these are different elements that the person created. For instance, that is probably the void. You know, So we have all these different pieces. It says modified void extrusion. So that's the void and a few things. So if we want to make this thing wider, we're probably going to have to edit the void and edit the concrete. Now, we're going to go back to the top view and we're going to step through the process of making these things work right. We're going to go in and put in some reference planes. Now I'm going to take my time, go to Create, fire up a tool called Reference Plane. I'll put one here. Okay. Now we have a center one already, so we don't have to put one there, and I'll put one over here. I'm not too worried about the, the location they are off of the center, because I'm going to have Revit tighten that up. Now, we are in Plan View, and I recommend putting the dimensions where people can use them. If I put it in a section, they might not look there. So I'm going to put it in Plan. I'm going to say Dimension from 1 there to there to there place it you'll notice that they're not equal I'll say make them equal you'll see they kind of jump now the next thing we'll do is I'll say a line from the outside to here and then I place it now that's going to be our width parameter so I'll grab it and we're going to go up top and add it in now if you want to use an analogy of the body reference planes are the bones put the bones in now what drives bones muscles so dimensions, you think of those as muscles, they drive the bones. Then, what drives muscles? The brains. So we're going to add the brains now. The brains are the parameters. So we add a parameter, add a parameter. We'll call this one, let's say, width. So we type in width, we hit OK on that. Now we've added the brains. Now let's test it. We'll see if our brains work. <laughs> we come up top here, we type in, let's say, 2. We hit apply. Uh, OK. And you'll notice how it jumped. So we know that's working. The final thing we'll do is we have to make uh, the solid associate with the object. Now if you're building from scratch you would not have created the solid yet, you would do it now. Now I can pick these solids in, as needed, I'm going to hover over this one. Now which one am I hovering over? That's my void. I'll say okay, let's start with the void. Uh, I can edit the extrusion or I can use the direct align command. So I'll say align this and that and it pulls it over and I lock it. Now I'm going to do it again because what we have here is align we have a void and a solid. So let me hit escape, align, one, and I'll tab over it so I forget it. Okay. Let's go see what's happened there. So it should have been, oh, that's the hole. So let's go ahead and uh, see what's happened. I've got this element here, and I can again drag it, let it go. That's another way of doing it, and then lock it. So what I've done here is, on the right hand side, I've got the concrete and the void in the right place. I'm going to grab this one, drag it over, let it go, lock it. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing. We'll click off of it, click this, the solid or extrusion, let it go, and again lock it. So what we've done is we've now set up uh, that parameter. Now we're going to get again the final test drive. We'll go back up top, hit width. Now this time I'm going to set it to three feet. Hit apply. I hit OK. Now you'll notice how here. When I typed in 3, it fed it to the width, the width went to 3, and equally spaced it about that. Let's check it out in the section. You'll notice how the concrete part got extremely wide. Now, 
if we want to take it further, you can come in here and put more reference planes and associate this void with that. So you could adjust all the components as needed. Now, you may say, well, I want the, the drain to be, let's say, 12 inches, maybe plus 4, plus 4. So however you want to lay the math out, it's up to you. But that's pretty much the game we play. Now, well, let's go back, final test. We'll change the width to 2 foot and the length to 12. Oop. Drop that down. Length to 2 feet, 2 foot, and we'll set it to 12. We hit apply on that. You'll notice it changed here, and let's check the length now. We'll go back to the floor plan, and you can see it changed. Now, the nice thing about putting it the way we did was if, let's say, my buddy William wants to check this out and see how it works, he can come in here, and he can see the dimensions and the parameters and how they all work. When people embed them, it makes it confusing. So there you go. That is the tip of the week. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, check us out on the web at thebimguys.com or therevitguy.com. Thank you.